Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This lesson I decided to conduct in English. So today we're gonna talk about Jira. When we talked about test cases and defects, I mentioned Jira as one of the most popular defect tracking tools and test management tools and also Jira is a good tool for project management. It's a product of Atlassian Corporation it's not a free product, it costs some money for a license depending on total number of users and on uh, different plugins which you can select for your particular organization. So if you have Jira on your project, it's really cool. It's a very cool tool, very flexible and it's very easy to see, to maintain the project, to track your working progress, your items, your quality, and so on and so on. So let's start with some basics. The first item that we're gonna talk is project. Jira has a toolbar. Each menu item consists of a drop-down list. So project menu item is used for view project, some particular project or all the projects. Also if you have uh, extended rights from Jira administrator, you can create a new project. But usually, as a regular user, you don't have those rights, so you just can only view the project. So Jira can be used for different types of project, for example, for software development, for help desk even, support marketing type of projects, employee performance system, website enhancement, the request management system and so on and so on. The most frequently used item is probably issues. Issues is a name for, for a single item in Jira. There are different type of issues, we will talk about it in a minute. But in general, what can you do with issues? You can search for an issue, you can create an issue, you can open a report with your issues that you requested and the issues that you reported and also uh, we will talk about it in the end of our presentation about search you can save search results as a filter and use it for your future needs so as I said uh, issue is a single item in Jira issue can be a story, a task, a subtask, defect, help best ticket, leave request and so on and so on but for software development, mostly we use the following issue types. Subtask, bug, epic, improvement or enhancement, new feature, story and task. These issue types can be configured by administrator and if some issue types are prohibited by your administrator, you cannot create them. But generally these are default issue types and commonly used. Let's review each issue type in more details. Subtask is a, like a small task for an issue, for one single item. Let's say you have task development of some feature and you can create subtasks for it. Let's say one subtask for investigation, one subtask for implementation or development, one subtask for testing and so on and so on. It's just like an example. So bug, it's clear, it's a defect. Epic, it's a requirement, it's like a business requirement. A big bulk, a big piece of requirements. It's not detailed item, only the high level description. Improvement or enhancement, it's a specific issue type that used for creating some suggestions like you want to improve some functionality or, or something, you create this improvement or enhancement and you describe what exactly you want to improve. You can assign this task to a responsible person and a trans responsible person can accept or decline this improvement. The next one is new feature. It's actually a feature that needs to be developed, needs to be created. Story, it's a user story. Usually epic needs to be divided by a few user stories that are related to this specific epic. 
and task is that something that needs to be done. How to create an issue in Jira? Here on the toolbar you see the menu items and create button. When you hit the create button, you will see the following pop-up window, which offers you to fill in the fields and create a specific type of issue. Let's say in this example we create a bug. If you hit this drop-down list, you will see the full list of issue types that you can create. Here you can select the project, summary is mandatory field, description, you type a description here, if it is bug it is steps to reproduce, actual expected result, fixed version, you can add here a version of your product where you are going to fix this issue, priority, labels, labels means like keywords, you can mark let's say a different type of bugs, for example functional bugs, UI and so on and so on. Another one cool feature of Jira is a possibility to link one issue types to another. Let's say this bug is related to some specific user story. So you can select this drop down menu and select option relates to and here you select the type of issue. The user story that it is related to this bug. Next item is assignee. It's a person to whom this issue will be assigned. You can add this person manually and uh, here there are some few fields left like epic link. If you have epic for this particular item you can add it and also below here you have fields for logging your time for estimates. And you click the create button and you, you will see a pop-up message that this issue number blah 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 is created. While creating an issue you can configure the fields that are visible for you. So you can mark all as selected, you will see all the fields or you can check only those that you need. And again, a list of fields is configured by your Jira administration. When you created an issue, you can open it on a pop-up window where you uh, saw information that issue is created. You can hit the link and open it in a full screen mode. Each issue consists of the following parts. The first one is a summary. Here you can see the name of the project and issue ID. The second section is different actions. Work workflow states and so on, like type, priority, fixed versions, components, labels, sprint number, status, resolution. Below you can see description and subtasks that are linked to this particular item. Number three is change related information like comments, history log, activity log and work log. Number four it's sharing and exporting functionality. Fifth section is development panel and sixth is agile board related like sprint number and link to your board, dashboard. When you opened an issue you can edit it. You can edit the fields directly by clicking mouse on the field value for each of those fields or you can click the edit button and you will see a similar screen like for creating issue but it will call edit and you can change entered values there. Also there is another interesting button which calls more. If you click this button you will see more actions that you can do with this issue. Like you can log your work, you can attach files, screenshots, different types of diagrams, you can watch an issue. If you watch an issue you will receive all the notifications with any changes that are related to this issue. You can create subtask, move, link this issue to another item, clone, clone mean copy, you can add labels or you can delete. A list of options also is configured by your Jira administrator. Let's talk about search types in Jira. The first one and the most popular is quick search, it's a search bar here. When you start typing search text inside the box, you will see a drop down list with matching results. The first block is issues related, the second one is projects related. So if you just click inside the box, 
you will see the drop down. When you start entering any values, this list will show only matched results. Another one type of search is basic search. Let's say you can use it with issues. You can search for issues. If you hit issues menu item, you will see a drop down. Click search for issues and here you can select different options like project, type of issue, status, SNE and even more. You can check those checkboxes. As I mentioned before, you can save your search as a filter and if you frequently use searching options, you can use those saved filter here. There is another one type of search, which is called advanced search. Jira has its own language for advanced search. It's called JQL. It's something like SQL, very similar syntax. And if you know the basic commands, you can use like queries for searching your items. The next screen we are going to talk is a backlog. Here you can see the list of items for a specific current sprint. If you select any item, you will see the information on the right sidebar. Section 2 contains actions which you can do with this particular issue. And within section 3, you can see the issue details. There is a left sidebar with the following items. Backlog, active sprints, releases, reports, issues and components. So if the backlog menu item is selected here, in the upper section you see the current sprint backlog, items that are related to current sprint, and below you will see the remaining items that are in your backlog. This is how your dashboard looks. On this example we can see four statuses for each item, to do, in progress, in review and done. These statuses might be different for your project. You can have less or more items, more statuses. It depends on the project needs and configuration of your dashboard. But it's a very flexible tool and you can manage these columns as you wish, if you have specific rights for this. So let's say in our project we have five statuses. First status is to do. The next status is in progress, third column calls to verify, fourth column calls verification and last column call calls done. So what do you do with your item? When you started working on your item, you move this item into the next column. If you are responsible for this column, you just move it manually by the mouse. Let's say when you finished work on this item, you assign this item to the responsible person for review and move it to the next column. Each change in issue modification is visible for watchers or for persons who are assigned to this issue. So this guy will know that you assigned the issue or you moved it from in progress to in review column. After he finishes the review, he can move it to done and log work. Here in the bottom right corner you can see a number. It's a story points for this particular item. When you spend some time for, let's say, development and review, you can log your work. When you open this item, you can enter the actual number of hours which you spent on this particular issue. It's very useful to see which item has which status. And uh, you can see the progress, you can see, let's say, how many items are assigned to some specific person, how many items are in progress, how many items are ready and done, and so on and so on. And the last thing that we will talk about today is uh, Jira reports. Jira allows to create a lot of reports depending on your needs, your project needs, your management needs. So you can create reports by issues, by statuses, by assignee and assigned person, by fixed version and so on and so on. It's a very flexible tool and there are a lot of settings to create different types of graphs. It's very useful actually. You just select 
the options that you need to build a report and then in few clicks you will see a detailed graph with the statistics. It's all so far about Jira. Please subscribe to my channel not to miss any interesting videos and updates. You will see the next video very soon. Like this video if you enjoyed this tutorial and have a nice day. See you soon. Bye.